Welcome back to this YouTube tutorial series on implementing numerical methods in Python. And in today's video, we're going to be going over implementing the composite Simpsons rule for approximating single integration. So as a slight review, we're going to go over exactly what is an integral. An integrand for a single variable function represents the total area underneath that function. So let's say we have our function here in black, as we can see, how would we approximate the area underneath this? And as you can see from this diagram, uh, you can already guess that we can approximate it using rectangles. So as, that is exactly what the Raymond sum does. The Raymond sum is a primitive technique used to sum the area beneath a function by creating rectangles. So what we do here is we divide our interval into subsections creating rectangles, we calculate the area of each rectangle, and we add them up. And as we can see here, our Raymond sum approximation is going to be slightly off because we are underestimating with this uh, missing section and then we're overestimating by uh, having some overlap on our function. And so uh, to fix this, in mathematics, we have limits. So what we do here is we make an infinite number of subdivisions. That way it is simply uh, almost a vertical line uh, as a rectangle. We have an infinite number of these and we add them up and that is simply an integral. Well, unfortunately we can't do that uh, necessarily uh, and computers, so we have to find some kind of numerical approximation. And one of these methods for approximating integrals is known as Simpson's rule. It is a method for estimating the area under a definite integral. It is derived from integrating the interval over the second degree Lagrange polynomial by dividing the interval into two subsections. So here we have uh, an example of Simpson's rule in action. So here we have our function in f, uh, excuse me, our function in black. We have our second degree polynomial in red, which is denoted as p of x. What we do here is we divide our subsection and, excuse me, we divide our interval into two subsections, a to m and b to m, excuse me, m to b. And the area of this p of x is denoted by this equation, where h divided by three times f of a plus four times f of m plus uh, four, excuse me, plus f of b, where m is equal to h and h is equal to b minus a divided by 2. So simply what we do here is we calculate f of a plus f of b plus 4 times f of m divide that by 3 and then times that back by h and that is the area of our second degree Lagrange polynomial. And what we can do here is we can use this to approximate our integral and this is uh, extremely accurate for small intervals but as you see here uh, if our interval a to b is spread out over a long distance, we're going to have some, uh, some uh, overestimation and underestimation. And so what we do here is we can adjust our Simpson's rule into what's known as the composite Simpson's rule. So a composite Simpson's rule is an adaptation of the Simpson's rule for larger intervals by increasing the number of subpoints. So what we do here is we uh, increase the number of subpoints. And it is noted by the following series. We have h divided by 3, like normal, except this time we choose x0 uh, to represent our points, or better known as our nodes. So we have f of uh, x0 plus 4 times f of x1 plus 2 times f of x2 plus 4 times x of f of x3, and we follow this series until we reach the end, where we have 2 times f of x and minus 2 plus 4 times f of x minus 1 plus 4 times f of xn, where h is denoted by b minus a divided by n. So here we have uh, our original h was b minus a divided by 2, where our n in this instance would be 2. So in the original Simpson's rule, we were actually having two subsections, which is why we were dividing by 2. And in this new, new notation, x0 simply refers to a, and xn simply refers to b. So as we can see here, we have f of a, which refers to f of x0, f of b here, which refers to f of xn. And what we do is we increment uh, between each node by a step that is equal to h. So let's say we're given an interval from 0 to 1, and we want to choose uh, n to be 5. So we want 5 subsections. What we, what we do here is we calculate h to be 1 minus 0 divided by 5, which is 0 0.2. So we take f of 0 plus 4 times f of 2 plus 2 times f of 0 
plus four times f of 0 0.6 and this would in this series denotes uh, longer intervals but in this case we would just continue on we would say two times f of uh, 0 0.8 and then we would take uh, four times f of one and so as we can see here we have an alternation so we calculate the first value calculate the last value and we say four times two times four times two times four times two times and four times so we begin our series with four times our value and we end our series with four times our value and in between uh, we do a two times so this is the simple uh, uh, function for uh, approximating an integral so now let's actually implement this in Python so we're going to say def composite Simpsons when you feed it a, a function our uh, interval a to b and our n value and one of the things I forgot to notice uh, excuse me forgot to uh, point out is our n has to be even so we cannot have an odd number of subdivisions we need an even so first things first we need to check to see if n must be even if it's not we're going to return none and for any of you guys who are unfamiliar this is known as the modulus operator what it simply does is it takes our n value it divides it by two and it returns the remainder so for example let's say if we were to pass in four we would say four divided by two the remainder is zero because we would have a value returned as two but let's say this was five so five divided by two is 2.5 so our value returned would be five if we were to use the modulus operator so what we say here is the remainder of this operation isn't equal to zero and this would only occur if our value was even so an even number divided by two is always going to return a remainder of zero so this is how we check to see if our number is even or not so now that we have that we're going to calculate our h where h is equal to our, our b minus a divided by n and as we see here we're going to take the function of our first value and our function of our last value. So I'm going to do that here as well. I'm going to say first is equal to function of a. The last is equal to function of b. And then we need to create our uh, our series of loops for this uh, inner section. So we first need to make our increment size. We're going to denote that as x. So x is first equal to a. And we're going to say sum is equal to zero. We're going to say for i in range of n minus one. And we do n minus one simply because we do not want to calculate the last value here. So what we do here is we say x plus minus h. So we update our x to equal our h excuse me, our, we, we update our x with the next increment size. So in our previous example of a is uh, zero and b is one, and our n is five, our increment size would be 0 0.2. So we would start at zero, we increment plus h to 0 0.2, we take our increment, uh, excuse me, we take our current step size and then add our increment to 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, etc., etc. So what we do here now is we take our function of our new x value and we need to check to see is our current i index even or odd so because we're going to alternate between timesing this value by four or two so we're going to say if i modulus two equals zero which means it's even we're going to times our value by four Now, even though, as we see here, if we were to count uh, this as our first step, this would be 0, 1. So that means our, our times 4 needs to be on odd. However, we're doing it here on even simply because we are calculating the first outside of our for loop. So we're starting our for loop at 
the beginning here. And so what we need to do is act, uh, after we've looped all the way through uh, from 1 to n minus 1, we calculate the total, which is equal to h divided by 3 times our first plus the sum, where the sum is the inner, and we add our last. And then we will return total. Alright, and there's one thing I forgot to uh, fix up real quick, but here, if we check to see if our n modulus 2 equals 0, that means it's even, we're returning with none. We want this to say is not 0. So if our n is not even, then we return none. So that's a quick fix. So now let's go over a quick example of this function in motion. And so now I'm going to implement our example. So here we have a small example. Uh, we're going to integrate over x squared plus 5 from 0 to 10. And it has an approximate solution of 383.3333. So we're going to say def a function of x. We're going to return x squared plus 5. And so we're going to say print Posit Simpson's rule function interval from 0 to 10 and an n of let's say 4 or 2. So 2, uh, if you remember correctly, from Simpson, uh, the original Simpson's rule uses a subdivision of n equals 2. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. And it actually approximates our interval. So this function is actually not uh, too bad to approximate. Now, if we get more uh, advanced functions, we would have to increase our n value. And so, for the, the simplicity of this video, I'm going to increase our n to, let's say, 4. What I'm going to do is I'm going to print iteration plus our string of i. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to print our step node. string of x. We're going to do this after we update our x. So as we can see here, the first thing we need to do in this example uh, is the following. So here I just uh, gave a quick example of what's going on underneath the hood in this uh, problem. So we give it the, our, uh, our function, our interval from 0 to 10, step, uh, no, excuse me, our n is equal to 4. What we do here is we calculate our step size h, which is equal to 10 minus 0 divided by 4, which is equals 2.5. We calculate our first, f of 0, our last, f of 10. And we do here is f of 0 plus 4 times f of 2.5 plus 2 times f of 5 plus 4 times f of 0, uh, excuse me, f of 7.5 and then plus f of 10. And so in this for loop, uh, we don't start uh, necessarily at 0. So you might think since we're going from i is equal uh, to 0 to n minus 1, we're going to include this first index. But the reason why we don't is the first thing we do is we update our x. So our first, at iteration 0, our first step node is 2.5, not 0. So we start at 2.5, and our uh, second iteration we go to 5, and then our third iteration we go to 7.5. So th this is how we exclude the ending node and our beginning node in this for loop, which is why we simply add them here at the very last. So hopefully you've learned uh, a little bit about this uh, method and how to implement it, and in the next video we're going to be going over a more advanced version of this method. So stay tuned.